So years ago, I discovered that one of the viewers of the channel was this wonderful person, Tay Zonday, famous for his somewhat uh, unusual song, Chocolate Rain, basically one of the first viral songs on YouTube ever. And so he might actually enjoy this video. Today we're going to discuss a different type of rain nobody knew existed until this recent study. Today we're going to discuss quantum rain. Something that's as bizarre and as unusual as it sounds, and something that does seem to be kind of real. And here's an actual image of what it kind of looks like. Now this might not make sense right away, but in this video we're going to be discussing exactly what this is, how this works, and discuss what this means for science. And so hold on for person, this is Anton. Let's discuss chocolate rain, uh, let's discuss quantum rain in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the idea of rain and how it usually works in the classical world. Because in this case, in order to understand this phenomenon, we first have to understand the classical water and the classical rain, as both phenomena are surprisingly related. And so when we talk about regular rain, no matter what it's made out of, on Earth it's usually water, we're essentially talking about a formation of classical droplets based on the principle known as plateau Rayleigh instability, although more commonly known as Rayleigh instability, which can sort of be visualized here. Here you're seeing an example of three separate liquids, water, glycerol, and polyethylene glycol mixed with water that basically produce three separate droplets. But they produce them in an extremely similar way based on very similar physical properties. And so here Rayleigh instability explains why a typical stream of fluid basically turns into droplets, or how fluid breaks apart into smaller chunks as a result of a fluid thread or fluid filament breaking up. And so if it wasn't for real instability, a typical rain cloud would actually produce these extremely thin filaments of water reaching all the way to the surface of Earth. But liquids, because of something known as surface tension, tend to minimize surface area. In this case, surface tension refers to the property of all liquids that tends to minimize surface area as much as possible, depending on what the liquid is made out of. Here's actually a really cool example of someone trying to cut a droplet of water and how the surface tension in this case turns a single droplet into two separate pieces. And it just so happens that water has a much higher surface tension compared to other liquids. This is actually the result of very strong hydrogen bonds that causes the molecules to get more tight and hold tightly together, which also makes water very difficult to basically break. And a fun fact, when you jump in a swimming pool from slightly higher up, the pain that you feel, that's basically surface tension breaking as you enter the water. And this in essence allows water to form very spherical droplets with other liquids like ethanol or oils usually producing much, much smaller droplets because their surface tension is much weaker. And it's really mostly water droplets that tend to be spherical, whereas droplets of oil, for example, will usually have more unusual shapes. But the main focus here is that real instability that basically creates these droplets. All of this is usually the result of extremely small perturbations inside the stream of water that very often produce a kind of a sinusoidal component. Or in other words, it tends to produce a wave inside of the stream. But it's not just one wave, it's usually a bunch of waves that start to interact with many waves, adding and subtracting their own amplitudes and eventually producing instabilities that result in individual chunks. And so as a result, instead of seeing a single stream of water, we end up seeing droplets. Or just to rephrase this, as the stream of liquid tends to get longer and longer, it becomes more and more unstable until it eventually starts to develop ripples. And as these ripples grow in size and become more powerful, part of the liquid eventually pinches off and starts to form individual droplets. And so what this image shows us is basically a cylinder of fluid slowly turning into a wave that will eventually become individual chunks of liquid, or individual droplets. And because of the surface tension, they will all then become spherical. This is of course to minimize the surface area. But when it comes to the quantum world, things do actually become extremely different and in most cases, atoms no longer behave in a classical way. And so, for example, when we talk about a typical quantum experiment, such as experiments involving supercritical gases, here we'll often talk about what's known as Bose-Einstein condensate, also known as BAC. This is a completely different state of matter that a lot of stuff becomes when it gets to extremely cold conditions, very close to the absolute zero, and in low-density environments. And so quite a lot of different gases 
we usually assume this somewhat bizarre state, a kind of a collective quantum wave referred to as Bose-Einstein condensate. And when in this state of matter, in many different experiments, researchers have already discovered a lot of really bizarre phenomena. You can learn about some of them in some of the previous videos in the description. But in this new study you can find in the description, Cavicioli and the team right here were able to show us something from the classical world that's not been seen before. And here it of course relates to this previously explained real instability and the formation of droplets. Although to be exact, quantum droplets by themselves have been observed before. As a matter of fact, quite a few experiments have been able to produce various quantum droplets in various bags produced in a lab. But today we're discussing the next step. Literally, quantum rain. And so for this experiment, researchers used very cold atoms of potassium-41 and rubidium-87 and basically turned them into a bag and then mixed them. Here, in essence, this was an extremely thin and extremely cold gas that mixed two separate elements. But they also placed this inside what's known as a waveguide, which in some sense is a kind of an invisible tube that allows researchers to control these atoms directly. These are mostly used for directing and manipulating various waves in various quantum experiments by providing a specific way a wave should travel and preventing spreading out in three-dimensional space. And though these could be optical fibers and even metal pipes, here this optical waveguide was basically formed by lasers. And here the overall first step was to basically create a kind of a quantum liquid. In this case this was an exotic liquid phase created by these two atoms. And so even though this was a bag, the potassium and rubidium atoms were behaving like a quantum liquid. Which means that in theory it might be able to produce something like this. A liquid stream. But since atoms in a typical quantum state usually lose their classical abilities and an ultra cold gas is unlikely to create something similar to a classical gas, here it wasn't clear what's actually going to be possible. And that's because a point-like structure of a typical atom no longer existed. Here these were no longer distinct systems, they were literally overlapping quantum states. But turns out even in these quantum states there are certain new laws that seem to form somewhat similar effects to what we seem to observe in really instability and the formation of droplets. For example, there seems to be a formation of a kind of a tension not so different from surface tension, which sometimes causes some of these atomic gases to very briefly become somewhat smaller packets or somewhat smaller droplets. And they actually tend to differ in size and in shape, just like liquid droplets, based on what kind of a particle seems to make up the gas. If you ever want to find out more about the exact effects, they're described in this study on what's known as Li Huan Yang correction, a very strange effect that creates a kind of a repulsion inside quantum states. And so in the past researchers have created these quantum droplets, but they usually disappeared super quick. But using certain elements, it becomes possible to create them for slightly longer. And so in this case, by using potassium-41 and rubidium-87, researchers were able to create droplets persisting for tens of milliseconds or slightly longer than other droplets, which allowed researchers to now see what they can do with them. And so here the next step was to release the rubidium and potassium atoms into this waveguide that would dramatically limit their wave-like structure and limit their interaction. And while well, reproducing quantum droplets was not very difficult. But the next step here was kind of surprising. They were actually able to create somewhat elongated droplets resembling a stream of liquid. Something that was initially in an excited state. But then within just a few microseconds, this somewhat long shape split into several other shapes, producing smaller droplets as a result. This is actually what you're seeing in this image. And in this case, this phenomenon was explained as a type of a capillary instability extremely similar to that really effect I described in the beginning. Something that's usually seen inside classical fluids, where the combination of surface tension and the wave instability causes the stream to fall apart and produces additional droplets. With the overall number of droplets produced in this case, depending on the strength of the attractive interaction and the total number of atoms. Which surprisingly highlights a sort of a liquid-like state for some of these exotic quantum gases. Or just to rephrase this, this was the formation of quantum rain, stabilized by quantum fluctuations and produced by a kind of a balance between attractive and repulsive forces that seem to only affect quantum states. And right now this is explained as a balance between attractive interactions, which we usually see in Bose-Einstein condensates 
when they tend to attract a lot of atoms into one single object and repulsive quantum interactions, like the Li Huan Yang effect I showed you previously. And it's this Li Huan Yang effect that basically produces the self repulsion, allowing these droplets to exist, with additional observations suggesting that these droplets are also somewhat incompressible and possess surface tension very similar to classical droplets. Although here I think this is mostly the result of the mixture of two separate atoms that instead of forming a single droplet that would be more or less spherical, they ended up forming something that's much longer and eventually fell apart. Nevertheless, this is definitely the first ever example of quantum rain. A dynamic breaking of quantum droplets into much much smaller components. But I guess the question is, is this useful at all or is it just for funsies? Well, right now, nobody really knows if this is ever going to find any practical use, but researchers behind the study do suggest that this could be used in quantum information processing, maybe in material science, and possibly in condensed matter physics. Just like with previous quantum discoveries, including the now famous quantum dots, right now we don't really know what use this might have. For example, by being able to control these liquids and by breaking liquids into smaller droplets, we could now explore the new liquid states that these droplets seem to represent. But more importantly, this work now provides a very specific guideline for future experiments and provides us with additional observations of the strange effects inside the quantum world, basically allowing us to discover new quantum phenomena that we didn't really know existed. And strangely enough, unlike in a classical droplet where the size is controlled by surface tension, here the size was mostly determined by the atomic number with a higher number producing larger droplets. But at least for now, that's kind of all we have. It's definitely an exciting experiment and an exciting new discovery about the mysterious quantum world and something we'll discuss even more once there are some additional discoveries. On that note, check out previous videos on a similar topic and some other bizarre phenomena we've talked about previously in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.